Hey guys, it's Chelsea from Little Mountain Ranch. I realized something the other day about my YouTube channel and that is for the most part, I do standalone videos that are based on a specific topic. I wouldn't really consider myself a vlogger per se. One of the downsides of not doing vlogs where I'm kind of keeping you up to date with what's happening around the farm is that when I do a video, like say my squash video where I shared that I was losing a bunch of my squash or when we had a really, really cold snap last week, those kinds of things, then you guys don't get an update on what has happened with them. So what I thought I would do today is catch you up on the last couple of weeks and give you a bit of an update on all of that stuff. I think the first thing that we're gonna do is head up to the beehives again and give them another check. And I suspect that I'm going to be able to show you something that's happening with the beehives that wasn't happening the last time we were up there. And one of the things that I can share with you right away is a little bit of an update on my squash. Here's one of my squash and I just went down to check. This is the first signs of rot that I've seen on my squash since um, that video that I put out a couple of weeks ago where I had over 10 of my squash that rotted. I do have three here that are all show showing some signs of rot. So I'm gonna bring these down to the chickens and we'll also check up on the chickens while we're down there. Something really exciting has been happening in the chicken coop in the last couple of days that I wanted to show you too. How am I gonna carry these squash? and this camera at the same time. I don't think that's gonna be doable. Where is a bucket or something? Hang on, I'm just gonna go see if I have a bag that I can use. Yes, I do. Maybe just to get rid of these squash, we'll head down to the chicken coop first. The good news is there's way less rot in there now. So what I did definitely helped for sure. We're also hitting that point in the season where it is mid-January right now, heading towards the end of January. That's just crazy. And so rot and softening and that kind of thing happening at this time of year is not that surprising. So I'm just gonna keep really close eye on it all. And then as soon as I see softening, I'll just feed them to the chickens. I don't mind cutting down on my chicken feed costs at all. Maple, what are you doing up here? Hi. What are you doing? What do I have in that bag? I don't think you're gonna like that. Let's go see. Today it is five degrees above freezing, if you can believe it. We did get down to those really cold temperatures that we thought we were going to. And within two days, it shifted by almost 40 degrees, which is just unbelievable. But because the chickens have been living in the chicken coop exclusively and they haven't been going outside at all, there is a lot of nasty bedding in here. So I think what I'm gonna do is actually spread out some fresh shavings, especially in here. Hi guys. I've already taken um, this down just so that they can have the air moving through. Just left it there in case it starts getting cold again. Your chicken? Is that your little Frizzle? Yeah. What's her name? I'm Frizzle. Her name's Frizzle. <laughs> okay, so why are these eggs so exciting? Because we haven't had any eggs now for just about eight weeks, I think. The way chickens work is that they have a laying cycle and their laying cycle is based on the amount of daylight hours. And so when the days start getting really short, like they do where we live, they stop laying during that period of time. And you can use supplementary light to mimic sunlight during the winter time, and that will keep your chickens laying. They do, in our area anyway, slow down quite a bit um, when it starts getting cold as well, but they won't stop entirely like they do if you don't use supplementary light. And I actually, I'm not opposed to do, using light during the winter this year. It just didn't work out for us. Hi, Cypress. Come and say hi. Cypress, come say hi. How are you doing, mister? Hey. 
Um, this year I actually did set up my light, but I didn't end up having the timer set properly and then I just got busy and it just didn't end up happening. And I wasn't too worried about it because I don't mind giving my chickens a bit of a break. The thing to know about chickens though is that they have a set number of eggs that they can produce from the time they're a chick. Cypress? Can you call Cypress please, Claire? Thank you. <laughs> call him, call him. Keep going, Cypress, keep going. <laughs> there we go. So chickens have a set number of eggs that they can lay in their lifetime. So if you are going to use supplementary heat, you're going to shorten the amount of years that your chicken is going to lay, but you are not <laughs> going to shorten the number of eggs that you will get overall. So that's something to keep in mind. A lot of people feel that giving them the break is part of the natural cycle. And I haven't noticed any difference as far as what I would say the quality of life of the chicken is. Or the length of life for that matter. One of my hens is... I guess she'll be eight years old this year. She is the last remaining hen from my one of my first flocks of chickens. So she gets to hang around, but okay. So we're just gonna get a little bit of work done. I'm going to break open those squash for the chickens. I have a container here that I use to put the scraps in just so it doesn't make like a gross mess all over the ground. Cause often we'll have leftover oatmeal or whatever from breakfast that will go in there. So I'm going to break open the squash and give them a little treat. Okay, now we have some happy chickens. Now we will head up to the beehives and see if there's anything interesting happening in the hives because there should be. If all is well, I should be able to show you something kind of cool. So the great news is my hives are alive, which is fantastic. I decided to remove the hay that I had up on the top of the boxes and the extra hay that I had around the entrances just because it's so warm and it's supposed to be fairly warm for the foreseeable future. One of the amazing things about a honeybee cluster is that the average temperature at the core of the cluster is 35 degrees Celsius, which is unbelievable to me that they can maintain that type of heat, just these little tiny bugs in the middle of winter. If you've ever seen penguins in the far Arctic on videos, or maybe even in person, if you've been lucky enough, they bunch up when it's really, really cold. And they do basically, if you watch them, it's almost like a dance, but the ones from the outside move into the inside and the inside ones move out to the outside and there's so basically there's a constant movement of penguins from the inside to the outside of um, of their basically their cluster and bees operate in exactly the same way so they move the ones that got really warm on the inside slowly move to the outside cypress and um, so that way they all stay warm which I just think is remarkable so the thing that I wanted to show you let's see can you see this little brown patch right here on the ground and the same over here and over here. So what I just showed you is actually bee poop. So bees have to get rid of waste just the same. Whoa. The dogs thought they heard something dangerous, but it was just the kids playing. <laughs> anyway, bees have to get rid of their waste in the same way that all animals have to get rid of their waste. And what they do in the winter time is they basically store it up in their bodies. And then as soon as it gets warm enough, they will do basically a waste removal flight and the bees will leave the hive and they'll get rid of the waste away from the hive and then they'll go back into the hive again. And I just think that's amazing. The longer I keep bees, the more I realize how ignorant I am about how miraculous and amazing nature is because it really is just unbelievable. The things that these little tiny bugs can do that we couldn't even dream of is just staggering. So I'm just gonna run up and check my last hive. This is the one hive I'm a little bit worried about. I caught this swarm from one of the neighboring ranches this past summer and I just, I don't know, I just haven't had the best feeling about it. So let's see. Nope, they're still good. You see all this stuff right here? This is actually called propolis. It's like a glue kind of substance. And it's something that the bees make in order to fill up, fill any of the gaps in their hives to just protect it from the elements. Again, amazing, hey? Guys, I am so desperate for spring. 
right now we had a beautiful sunny day yesterday and the feeling of the sun on my face was just heavenly and I got a package in the mail from one of my dearest friends her name's Mindy she has a YouTube channel called life goes north and she sent me a um, package of seeds that she had saved from last summer and just opening that package and looking at the seeds made me need to go and get my seed collection out. You guys can expect a video coming up soon where I go through all of my seeds and talk about what I'm planting this year. I have huge plans for my garden this year. I want to expand from just growing food for us to growing food for our animals as well. We grow hay, so we are hay farmers, but I want to grow some wheat and some field peas and sunflowers for the chickens because now that we're at the point where we're not having to buy hay anymore, I'd like to get to the point where we don't have to buy chicken feed anymore. That would be amazing. I think there's one more thing that I will check before I go inside and that is the root cellar. We haven't done a peek on the root cellar in quite some time and I'm gonna traipse through, oh my goodness, this deep, deep snow in my garden. I should have taken the path. This wasn't the smartest idea. always shocking how much warmer it is in the root cellar than it is outside. The average temperature in here is around 11 degrees. It's pretty dark in here, but these are looking pretty good still. These are turnips, rutabagas, and carrots. So that's pretty good. Everything is looking good in there and still crispy. So I don't know if you can, can you see the frost? that's up on the roof. So this alleyway, I think it's about 15 feet long. I measured it once long ago. And this is really a requirement because, because it does hit freezing temperatures in here. So you really, when you're digging a root cellar, you really need to dig it way, way back. Whew, now I'm out of breath after traipsing through that snow. Okay, I'm going to head in the house, but I will see you all very soon. Bye.